Welcome back everyone to more NASCAR Heat 3 coverage here at Knee Pit Gaming. Today's setup video takes us to Homestead Miami Speedway, which is the site of the championship race for all three of the major NASCAR series from Trucks, Xfinity, and Cup. We'll be talking about the setups for each of those three uh, divisions as well as a little bit about the track itself and of course we'll mix in a little bit of discussion about lap times along with it so let's get to it all right now that we're here at the track let's uh, talk just for a moment about the track itself before we get into uh, lap times and the setup so the track itself can be run wide open or very close to wide open in all three of the major series um, and I generally don't run it wide open I have I've crack the throttle a little bit, maybe to about 80 or 75% throttle on corner entry, just to let the car rotate. Um, the AI are not very competitive at this track, so you will easily be able to run the AI without much effort. And in fact, that's why uh, I chose to run this particular setup because it's very stable for me and there was no need for me to really push the envelope and continue to try to find more speed as I was easily running uh, outrunning the AI from the very beginning. Now this track has multiple grooves. You can run uh, competitive laps anywhere from right around the bottom, uh, in the middle, and all the way up right next to the wall. Of course, it can be a lot of fun to run right up next to the wall. You just have to be careful about getting a little bit too close to the wall and scraping up the right side, which of course will have you losing a lot of speed. But all three or four grooves here are uh, very much in play. Uh, of course, the AI will stick mostly to the top uh, third of the track. So if you stay uh, a couple of grooves off the wall, you'll have a lot more room. And if you go all the way to the bottom, you will have nobody down there with you to race against. So keep that in mind as you're racing against the AI. Now let's move on to uh, the setups and talk a, bit, a little bit about lap times and so on. Um, you can see we're already here in the cup car, and that's because this is another one of those tracks where I run the same or very close to the same setup in all three of the series from Trucks, Xfinity, and then finally into Cup. So there was really no reason to start out in Trucks and then progress through Xfinity and Cup in the video. We'll just start out in Cup and then I will uh, give you some ideas about how to loosen or tighten the car as we move along uh, because I certainly do loosen up the car a little bit more for the Trucks or Xfinity than I do for the cup cars. Lap times here, for me in the trucks, uh, I got down around a 32 flat and that was blowing away the AI, so I stopped. Uh, but anywhere around a 32 flat and you're gonna be uh, probably three to four tenths in qualifying quicker than the AI uh, at their fastest. And uh, of course in race trim, you're gonna be even faster than them as they slow down from uh, qualifying to the race trim. Xfinity cars, somewhere around a 31.2, 31.3, and you will again be miles ahead of the AI there, both in qualifying as well as in race trim. And then finally in cup, uh, somewhere around a 30.4, 30.5 will have you uh, well ahead of the AI. So speed should not be an issue here. It's really all about keeping the car stable. So the setup I'm showing you guys is something that is very stable for me, something I can run uh, either wide open or very close to wide open around the entirety of the track without having to worry about getting too loose or too tight. We'll start off the setup discussion with the shock settings. Uh, the 3-5 setup of bump and rebound works really good for me at nearly everywhere. Uh, but as I mentioned in, in every or very nearly every setup video I do, that's not to say that this is the only thing that will work. There are any number of combinations that you can use on uh, the shocks corner by corner on the car to make it handle. The 3.5 setup simply uh, feels fine to me, and I didn't have any reason to really change it uh, in the limited time that I, that I had to spend on this track, so that's why I went with the 3.5 setup. Moving on to the weight settings, we want maximum left side weight because we are turning left on an oval. And then we go to front weight and wedge, 52% on the front weight or nose weight. Uh, that is the higher number you use here on the front weight, it will keep the car stable and tighter, uh, particularly on corner entry. So keep that in mind. If you want to loosen up the car a little bit on corner entry, then one of your options is to reduce that front weight some. 
Then we move on to wedge, and you can see 54% wedge, which is a fairly high number for me. I think 55% is actually the max in this game. Uh, but the more wedge you run, the higher that number is, the more stable the car will be, and the slower it will rotate going into the corner. So a lot of stability be, to be gained uh, by using a little bit more wedge than you might think. Uh, so again, if you are feeling like the car just will not rotate uh, for you when you would like, and as much as you would like, then try lowering that wedge number, and that should help you out. Moving on to the spring settings, maximum front springs, simply because I like the feel of uh, the heavier front springs. I like to really feel the front of the car, and 1,200-pound and springs in both the left front and right front allow me to do just that. So again, it's a feel thing. And uh, if you feel like you're getting a little bit too loose, for example, on uh, corner entry, try dropping that left front spring down to around 1,000 uh, or even a little bit lower, and that should tighten you up on entry. Moving to the rear of the car, 500 pounds in the left rear, 600 in the right rear. This is basically what I consider max rear springs. Uh, 600 pounds is the maximum you can run in the rear of the car. And I, I use 100 pounds of rear spring split so that puts me at 500 pounds on the left rear you can certainly use uh, quite a bit more rear spring split but again i didn't really need it the car was rotating just fine so i went with the stability of only using 100 pounds of rear spring split if you feel like the car or truck is too loose overall and the rear end of the car is just coming around too much then uh, of course, you've got multiple opportunities to adjust that, but one of the, your options is to simply reduce both rear springs by 50 to 100 pounds uh, or even more and see if that doesn't tighten up the car and make it more stable for you. I use the maximum rear spring here, uh, particularly in the right rear, just so that I can uh, get the car rotating better uh, without using some of the other options that we'll look at here momentarily. Uh, moving on to the tire pressure settings, as always, there's any number of different tire pressures you can run and whatever feels most comfortable for you. For me, 27 pounds on the left sides, although you can be plus or minus uh, a pound or two and probably not notice a whole lot of difference. And then on the right sides, anywhere from 31 to about 33 pounds. Um, and, and really, the variance there, you can use the tires and the tire pressures as springs. Think of them as springs. The higher the number you use on the tire pressure, the stiffer the spring effect will be in the tire. And then of course the opposite is also true. The softer that you make the tire, the lower you make the uh, the tire pressure, the softer the spring will, will feel in the car. So that's a good way that you can use the tire pressure adjustments, particularly during a race when you can't make things like spring adjustments or front weight adjustments. Uh, you can use the tire pressure to accomplish uh, something very similar to that. Moving on to the miscellaneous settings, uh, 10 degrees and minus 10 degrees on the front camber, simply because it works for me and I don't mind the feel of it. It can make the car feel a little twitchy to you. So uh, again, if you're feeling twitchy or a little bit too loose uh, and, and need a little bit more stability throughout the corners, then one of your options is to simply reduce the amount of camber you're using. That'll lower the amount of grip you have in the car, but it will certainly help to stabilize the car as well. Uh, front sway bar is my standard 1.15 inches simply because that is a good balance for me. Uh, any lower than that, the car doesn't feel uh, quite as stable as I would like, uh, a little bit too much weight transfer in the corners. And if I use more than this number, getting up around you know an inch and a half or so, then it just makes the car too tight and it doesn't want to rotate through the corner. So 1.15 is a very balanced setting for me. Let, moving on to the track bar, uh, 11 inches on both the left and the right side. I actually use a little bit higher than that in both the trucks and Xfinity, up around 12 inches or so, just to help the rotation uh, since you're going a little bit slower and you can be a little bit more aggressive in those cars with the throttle. So 11 inches is a, a very good number to start out with, but uh, you can certainly get by running more track bar or less uh, depending on how you want the feel. If you lower that track bar, that is going to tighten up the car, particularly on corner exit. So keep that in mind. Brake bias, uh, as usual, anywhere from 70 to 75% seems to work okay for me. The higher the number you use on the brake bias, the tighter the car will be and the more it will want to go straight when you are on the brakes. 
Now, in general, at this track, there's no reason to use the brakes. So adjusting the brake buys here would be for green flag pit stops, or if you find yourself in heavy traffic, you might uh, drag the brake a little bit. Uh, grill tape is really a non-issue. Just make sure you don't get the car uh, too hot on the oil temp. Uh, so I did not attempt to get aggressive on that. 25% is um, a good number there just to keep, basically all I care about is just don't get the, the engine overheated and you're fine there. Wheel lock is at 10 degrees, which is pretty standard for me on the asphalt tracks. If you want the car to steer quicker, uh, if you want uh, your your wheel turns to uh, take effect a little bit quicker uh, from the car then simply increase this number up to 12 15 or more and you will certainly get quicker steering out of the car and then finally in the miscellaneous settings we have steering offset which I generally use 0 0.10 and that is uh, this number is always going to be based on the camber that you're using in the front of the car because the steering offset is there to offset the pull to the left which can be pretty extreme on the straightaways. So the higher the number you use on the steering offset, it will offset more of that pull to the left. Just be careful about getting it too high because you can actually introduce a pull to the right uh, in the car, which can be very unsettling. Then we come to the gear settings uh, and there is a lot of room for adjustment here. And I'm using a 340 rear end ratio, but you can certainly use higher numbers than that or lower numbers than that, just depending on how many RPMs uh, you want to turn around the track. But 3.40 seemed to be a, a very good balance for me without getting too terribly aggressive and getting up close to the red line. Uh, but I've tested using a 350 and I think even a 360 gear here. Uh, but around 360, you're going to be right at the rev limiter, if not on it, um, as you enter the corner or before, actually. So keep that in mind. Uh, the higher number you use on the gear ratio, it will increase the RPMs and generally loosen up the car in the corner, uh, particularly when you are on the throttle. So keep that in mind uh, as that is a simple way to adjust the handling of the car, although not my favorite way of doing so. And as you reduce the rear end ratio, getting down around 3.3 or lower, that will turn fewer RPMs and generally tighten the car up, uh, particularly under... Uh, full throttle. So again, uh, a lot of adjustability here. I tried to give you a, you guys a stable setup uh, that you can really work with and fine tune to your own liking. Thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned as we will continue our support for NASCAR Heat 3.